Right, let's have a look at the trouble coal we had from last time on the Hyundai i20. Now it was P1189, 1186, and I'm using the Hyundai 2012 diagnostic tool from Global Diagnostic Downloads. If you want to see a link, it's in one of my other videos. So scrolling down from here, I could have chosen manual, shop manual, etc. And um, going down to P1186. You can see it's really talking about fuel pressure. And the fault was in my car. It was just dying on me, the, the injector's just shutting down. And I ran my um, diagnostic tool, the DS708, check the other video, uh, to see, to try and fix it. And it ran from some, through some tests. And my car's been running 99% of the time I gave it. 1% of the time, as I'm accelerating, it's still kind of cutting out a little bit. So obviously that's uh, what you call an intermittent fault. That kind of thing can crash a car, or it won't get ever get any better. You can kind, of, I can kind of patch it up a bit, but that's why I've decided to change the uh, fault. And I looked up this trouble code P one one eight six. It says fuel pressure. And I can't really see the end of it. Won't be any bigger. But general information. So that thing there, it, that's, that's fuel pressure regulation valve, regulating valve, regulator valve. So fuel pressure monitoring, minimum pressure at engine speed, too low. So if I pick, if it was P1185, maximum pressure, too high pressure, same, same spot. Um, just, just notice the picture hasn't changed. So too, pre too low, too high, it's going to be the same thing, it's this, this valve here that actuates, so the computer kind of moves something in, I'm sure there's a coil and it moves up and down to regulate the amount of fuel going into the rails. Now, I think it's similar to um, what you'll get in a refrigeration unit, where you've got high pressure and low pressure, and uh, the refrigeration, the liquid as it as it as it absorbs the warm air, passes through what you call a choke valve. I think it's a choke valve, and that takes it takes the choke valve to, chokes it to low pressure, so it turns into a gas. So likewise here, if you pass something at high pressure just after the um, pump, the pump is just here where the engine is, the fuel pump is at high pressure you can if you move and actuate up and down you're just varying what you call the diameter of the um, liquid passing through a tube right and that would either increase the pressure or decrease the pressure so if you had a larger hole diameter you would actually increase the pressure because it's straight from the pump so actually if you decrease the uh, diameter of the hole so it's kind of counterintuitive you actually you should in theory decrease the pressure because less kind of liquid or less is getting through that hole um, that's what I remember anyway from my years of engineering someone tell me if I'm wrong it could be uh, wrong it's many years ago uh, so as input valve pressure signal ECM common rail diesel controls fuel pressure reg regulator valve or maintain optimum rail pressure, see if it matches what I was saying. However, problem that leads to rail pressure out of target, tended by ECM to the computer, occurs due to mechanical or electrical reason. So mechanical means this thing could be jamming. Electrical could have a short. ECM shuts down engine, sets the trouble cold by limiting fuel, stops injector operations in order to prevent engine from being controlled abnormally. Fuel pressure monitor error is trouble cold, which diagnoses supplying state of low pressure fuel and two mechanical operation high pressure pump. 
Alright, okay. Mine is not a U2, it's a U1, so it's a lower class diesel engine. You set well rail pressure is lower than target by so it's lower to know so for more than one second in condition that rail passes that is press pressure. This cold is due to less less intended uh, fuel supply to common rail or excessive return of fuel supply to common rail short to lower I don't think it's that I think because it's the only thing that's moving here. I most likely it's that that's that's uh, the actual actuate or regulate thing that moves up and down that's a problem. Uh, I don't really need to know any of this. Possible cause fuel pressure regulator valve that's that stuck open. Okay. Fuel sensor output fixed at high but so the sensor just here I'm saying that could be faulty. So it could be one and two. I'm gambling, I spent £78 gambling, it's uh, that one there. After repair, it's essential that the fault is created. After diagnostic, select trouble cold, clear trouble cold, drive the vehicle with enabled conditions, download trouble in general information. After selecting diagnostic trouble cold, my check it, it's quality again. So it only happened once, didn't it? That was enough for me to try and change it, knowing me. Warm engine up to normal water pressure, turn off electrical devices and aircon. I think this is where you kind of just check electronically. So this is a pressure sensor just here on this end. This is deleted on my one. I think it's my, the higher engine one that's got a sensor regulated valve here. Mine is down here. Normal, we're in the so this is low pressure pump, high pressure pump, low pressure pump and high pressure pump. So there's also your fuel sender at the fuel tank. Sometimes I guess maybe they may not be. Um, may not be. In some cars I'm four months there is no fuel sen sender there. It's a bit like this. The pump, the pump just sucks it up. So there's some sort of return, fuel return, and uh, input fuels, low pressure pump high pressure pump, this is the regulating thing. This valve regulates between low pressure and high pressure. Obviously here when it's injecting it's high pressure. Right, so let's have a look at uh, replacement. 2009, is this one? Uh, fuel Fuel sender, no, no, this one. Fuel pressure control valve. Turn the ignition lock switch off. Disconnect the fuel pressure regulator valve connector. I take off the electrical thing there. Measure resistance between terminal one. Oh, we did that, didn't we? Um, actually, I think I'll really measure resistance before I put the new one. I'm trying to find somewhere where it says. Fuel, fuel injector, HI injector. Alright, see what it says. So, operates at 1600 bar. Oh my god, so never pull your engine running or within 30 seconds. Up. So it says here, so it's safe 30 seconds after inject the engine stops. And why would that be? Right, that would be because any fuel that is pressurised can go back. Remember on that other diagram, there's a return to, there's a pipe that returns fuel to the, um, to the tank, I think. So any excess will just return to the tank. So we know we turn it off 30 seconds, that's what really what I was looking for. Keep cleanly the parts, so we need to keep it clean. Pay attention to foreign substance and dirt again. Just before installation, insert tube hose, remove the protective cap, attach to them. They're saying remove the protective cap just before you put something new on, like I'm going to do. 
do not remove the injector except for a special case. When installation when installing yeah, wash the contour of the injector, play, replace O ring. But to protect damage caused by shock, vertically insert the injector careful basically. When installing the high pressure fuel pump, don't use again a high pressure fuel pipe, install the flange nut correctly. So we're just talking about injectors here, so I was just trying to get an idea. Right, okay. And uh, what I did is I went on eBay and I bought this thing here. This is, this is the thing upside down. And I've got a plastic cap over it. This thing here is upside down. Uh, and the if you look at the, the, the writing is on the side of it, you can't really see it, it's a bad picture. But the only thing I on my original one on the car it says 0928 400 750. It's the only thing I had to go by, and it's Bosch. I did. I was guessing it was a Bosch. I didn't even know it was a Bosch. So on Google search, I, on uh, Amazon, is where I bought it from this time. I just typed in uh, Bosch, this number, and this came out on my. And the where where I got this number from was on the car. On the car, there is a um, the same number on top, and then a whole load of other numbers underneath. But I um, the, this thing hasn't got those numbers in there. I just went straight by the number on top. So it's a bit of a gamble. We should see if it doesn't work. No why. All right, so let's get on with the job. Right, first job is to check for trouble cold since my last clearing of it. Okay. Reading engine codes. This is just normal. And it always says EGR VVT inconclusive. Read codes. No codes found. No mixture codes. Right. Let's carry on. First thing to remember clean the air rear down. Brake cleaner. Some of the crap. Mm. Okay, next thing. Unplug. I should click. Okay, you know what? Right, if you got stuck like me for 10 minutes trying to do this thing, I took this one off, which is easy. And uh, this one, these pair of pliers came underneath, just squeezed just here, squeezed under there and there very gently. Remember, you can bust any plastic. And it came off. Clicked and came off. Now, this is a difficult one. I was going to take this off, but that was a bit challenging. So again, I don't even need to take them off. Just the, these things I'm just curious. I'm not make them easy to take off. So clicked. Nope. I hate these damn rings. Oh, I give up. Oh, leave that one. Right, okay, that's off. And I'm thinking, oh, is it going to fall out? No, it's not. Come on, I'm pretty tight. Right, let me take this. Just actuate your thing off so you can get access to it. I remember taking this off before. And there we are. Three, yep. 
One, two. Barely get that one on me. One, two, three. This thing rod moves up and down and actuates the variable kind of valve thing inside the uh, inside the bit the uh, intake manifold. It's like a variable vein thing. You know? I could take it off as it is actually. Nah, let's just leave it. Right. So I've got <coughs> specs. That thing shoot, shoots out of me. That, now that sort of pressure, go for your skin, kill you. Go for your eyes, definitely blind you. So I can get to everything here. Right, just iron it up. Still iron this thing up. I know this thing moves. And I've taken this thing off before. I'm just thinking, is it worth it? Right, so three screws. Yeah, it yeah, looks exactly the same, apart from this new one. Got a bunch of numbers there. Five one one normal. There's different numbers at the bottom. Numbers at the top are the same. So it's a risk. And here's my cap. Keep it clean. Wobble bar end, so you can go around corners. Oh my god, don't mind, look at that one. I don't like looking at my tool. Damn it. Right. I think this has got to come off. That, that. That one, that one. This one comes off here, here. Here. I have got all my tools with me. Let's, let's take these off and see if it loosens up. Right. Talk that one off. Uh, that one. That one down here. That one off. Took that one off. Took that one off. Moves it to moves this over now. Now I can get access to that one down there. So there's one more down there. I didn't bother that because I couldn't find a tool with what I've got to fit down here. I wouldn't fit any day. Well, I'll have to go upstairs and get one, can't be bothered. Right, so once I get that one off, I know this is kind of flip over. I know that. I'm, I don't really want to risk taking that off because I've got the tools to fix it, get it if I, if I lose it. Right, so end up getting one of these, being lazy. Full set of tools, of, you know, I'll just use the, the ratchet spanner thing you've seen me use before. Okay. This is the cable. It's more pliable now. Okay. This thing down there, it's caught onto the room, the cable will drop quite a bit, and then that gives me access to that last one. And the bracket. Right. Kind of falling away. I didn't really take the last one off. Just loosened it. Clear it down again. I can see all of them. The engine's been off for a while. That 
on the next side, that's going to be a bummer, isn't it? Unless I take your fuel pipe off first. I could be stranded here, not be in the middle of nowhere. I better get the work if this doesn't work. I'm a protecting, and how do you prime when the old cars used to have a little pump? Prime your fuel. In these ones, I have no clue. Just hoping to switch the engine on. Notice where I got the Bosch idea from, there's the word Bosch down there. So, really. Unloosen the fuel pipe first. Close foot 14, bubble bar. Can't get it, I was trying to use that, but it didn't fit. So, engine off, hope for the best. Hoping the top one just to loosen again with the cross fit. Judge that to be a certain kind of tightness. And I can't even have to remember how tight it was. Magnet with me as well, so I've got to be careful. I'm using my hand, which is stupid. I reckon there's going to be a lot of threads in there. So obviously when I am doing threads, I'm just going to loosen the top one. And then kind of shift it to the side so we can get that. Still got the upper end, and see if it might start shooting out. Maybe a steel one, maybe a dumb one of these. And it's like a steel pushing out. So. And do that so that shifts and do that one I'm just gonna spin it over probably right let's do that then right T25 this one here T25 Torx 25 fits that goes the box You did just try and dribbled out, which is fantastic. I mean, it wasn't really on that tight. And I just shimmed it over and it all kind of fitted. And that was on quite tight. And I wish I had. Really, I should have done it the wrong way around. I should always do the hardest one to reach first, which is this one. Oh my god. Please reach. Got a skinny end here. Though. Yeah, but what?
just about. I want to see the whole thing reach there. Like a landing site. Hear that? Press the release there. Away. I don't think there's an option, I'm putting a big scan tool in there. Maybe there's an option with saying we're renewing this. Well. Well, she put my torques, not this, but screwdriver stuff. Get them off. Pop up. Tight. Maybe an O-ring. O-ring in here. So matching up the numbers. Numbers the same, bottom number nothing like each other. No clue. Five one one zero zero, five one nine two zero. All right, looks exactly the same, doesn't it? It's got an O ring in there, built in. So, you're stupid like me. You do things like me. Be prepared. Well, you're lucky if you're doing this one, you'll know if it works or not. Because I'm doing it first. It looks the same, isn't it? Double check. You're stupid like me, you do stupid ass things like this. Jump before you think. Run before you walk. I'll put the old cap on the old one. It doesn't seem to fit. Where's that going so, so nicely? So the old wing's worn out. Well, I'm going to mess around too much with this in the open. Alright. Opposite reverse of bring in. My biggest worry, because I haven't got the magnet, is dropping the screws, right? So that must be the biggest worry. So my thing is, hand only, no gloves. Lightly put the screws in on each one. Hardest one first, I think. Nope, put the easiest one in first so it doesn't move. Let's see, there's a new one in there. The very last one. Because of the size of my um, tool, I kind of what uh, rounded off the this torques a little bit. And it's a real bummer. I hate that. Uh, so the next time I'm taking it off, hopefully there's no next time. But we do take it off, and I've got need the right tools. I will get like a, a long, long torx one, like a T T handle where I can turn it. Is that, I don't think I can take another you know, unwind from that sort of funny angle. Right, so just tighten down fuel pipe and fuel pipe top and lock that one back on and uh, fit all the others back together and see how it rolls. Right, everything's back on apart from the uh, top cover lid. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do is key on, wait a while before I crank it. Once you key on that pump kind of starts I think. I'm not sure. Well if it was like a, a sender unit it will start to pump from the uh, fuel tank. So should we give it a go?
Frank. Checking for leaks. No leak. Oh shit. Easy. Look at that. See that? Gotta do that. I'm just gonna do that. Running smooth. Let's see. Uh, that is no good, is it? Sure that was. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that was. It was sounding funny, wasn't it? It was surely sounding funny. Yeah, it's still sunny, it's still, isn't it? Next job, I run the cheap scan tool for it, then the expensive scan tool. So I just ran the um, DS708 Pro using my old version 7 on this no faults so far so I'll press ok and some changes to things uh, ECU special functions uh, I think it's this one component change routine select the side left menu ECU change note, lambda sensor change note, roll pressure sensor change. Okay, well, it's the actuator. Differential pressure sensor change. Don't think it's that. Swell control valve change, nope. EGR VGT actuator change, nope. It wasn't a sensor, was it? Fuel mass adaption value in zero set. The, in this mode, you can set the fuel mass adaption values in zero set the operation time for the change rail pressure sensor. If you read, I think I should do this. Need to kiss you, turn it off for 10 seconds, turn it back on. Sorry about where the camera and angle. So, the way I'm seated right now, I should really turn this off like that. Be turn it back on, the music's going to come on, and turn it off. Okay. Component change routine. If you already select the left hand menu, think it's going to say, oh, zero dip, real pressure change. Differential pressure sensor change. 
And this is the actual, don't try it. Let's just do that one as well. Because it's a different in pressure, but whether or not it's the actual one, yeah. I can't really harm it. Zero in it. That's it, it doesn't really do anything apart from that. Right. Let's get off this. Let's read the code. Cruise control main lamp, cruise control no. Oh, this is what I'm looking at. Pressure control valve. Condition, ignition on off. Continue time until stop button. Pressure control by success. Oh, I forgot to measure the resistance as well, didn't I? Condition, ignition on. So it just says pressure control valve success. It tested it. It's definitely the thing I change. So it likes it. I'm not chucking up an error. Drink it up. See, so it took a bit longer to start up. 800 RPM, it's thinking about it. 900 RPM, 900 RPM, idle. Sounds okay. Before I hit the accelerator and it was dying on me, wasn't it? Didn't die. I mean, I died slightly. Yeah. Right. If you uh, want to do a run-up video on this, it means something went wrong. You never know. Uh, if you like what you see, and you think I've done a bit of a job for you, risk £78 for a necessary job, and it helps you out in deciding what's for for your car, please hit that like and share, comment, and I shall always try and get back to you. And if you can, when I advise you to, if you've got something for your car, and my car is nearly coming up eight years old, you want something sorted out for your car always look up the latest information because your model your spec will be different from mine so bear that in mind thank you for watching